Good afternoon, Musketeers. It's December 11th, 2015. I'm Eli Beadle. And I'm Cameron Stansberry. This is Xavier News. From the Xavier University Television Studio, this is Xavier News. Your campus, your region, your world. This is Xavier News. In Texas, U.S. District Judge David Godby has rejected the latest attempt to block Syrian refugees from entering the state. His ruling made it possible for the last of 21 refugees, mostly children under the age of 15, to resettle in Houston on Thursday. Godby has expressed skepticism towards Texas's recent efforts to block refugees in a lawsuit filed last week. The federal judge stated, quote, the fact that this court is required to assess the risk posed by a group of Syrian refugees illustrates one of the problems with this case. The court has no institutional competency in assessing the risk posed by refugees, end quote. The most recent lawsuit was filed Wednesday by Republican Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who said new evidence suggested that refugees pose a security threat. He cited recent comments by Republican Representative Michael McCall, chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, who said that individuals with association in terrorism have attempted infiltrating the U.S. refugee program, according to federal counterterrorism officials. McCall did not go into detail. District Judge Godby said that while the court recognizes the risks of terrorism, the state had failed to show competent evidence that the most recent refugees have any violent intent. Godby wrote, quote, Texas argues that terrorists could have infiltrated the Syrian refugees and could commit acts of terrorism in Texas. The court finds that the evidence before it is largely speculative hearsay, end quote. At least 14 people were killed and 17 wounded, wounded in a mass shooting last Tuesday in San Bernardino, California, during a Christmas party. This is the deadliest mass shooting in the United States since the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting three years ago. The suspects, 28-year-old Saeed Rizwan Farouk and his wife, Tashfeen Malik, were described as being dressed in, quote, dark tactical gear, end quote, and carrying two 22 caliber assault rifles and two semi-automatic handguns. They were both killed in a shootout with police after a brief car chase fewer than four hours after the shooting. The San Bernardino police chief, Jared Berguan, stated, quote, they came prepared to do what they did as if they were on a mission, end quote. No motive has yet been confirmed. Xavier may be a Catholic university, but the people in the community make up a far more diverse background. Earlier this week, the Jewish holiday Hanukkah began in style in the Gallagher Student Center. Here's Xavier News' Emily Brennan reporting on the story. We're in full swing of the holiday season, and here at Xavier University, students are offered a wide variety of opportunities to celebrate the true meaning of the season. Yesterday, December 6th, marked the first night of Hanukkah, and I'm here at the Student Gallagher Center, where the Interfaith Community Center is holding an event to light the first night of the holiday candle for Hanukkah. Xavier Center for Interfaith Community Engagement is located in the Student Gallagher Center. Today, they are holding an event that aims to create and strengthen a sense of community among individuals of diverse faiths. Rabbi Abby Inger, the founder and executive director of the center, led the events discussion, speaking from his personal experiences while incorporating the groups, different religions and cultures. The significant part of why we do uh, any of our uh, faith observances through Center for Interfaith Community Engagement is really because we want our students to be prepared for living, working, and even loving in a multicultural, diverse community. Regardless of faith, students were invited to participate in various Jewish traditions, such as the dreidel. They received chocolate Hanukkah coins, known as gilts, and enjoyed jelly donuts as a substitute for fried potato pancakes. Rabbi Abbey surprised the crowd by bringing in one of his most prized possessions from a close friend who happened to be a close Jewish friend of one of the most influential religious leaders in history. Saved by the woman who raised St. John Paul II, and that was carried by St. John Paul II, given to Yezhir, returned to him, and then given to me before he died. Students were fortunate enough to touch this incredibly sacred artifact along with others that included a coin of the Jewish king Alexander that dated all the way back to 103 BCE. In that celebration of light over darkness, 
in that celebration of religious freedom over tyranny, I think it has a particularly strong message for the American people. Thanks for tuning in. On behalf of Xavier News, I'm Emily Brennan. Happy, happy Hanukkah and happy, happy holidays to all. This Monday, billionaire business mogul and Republican presidential frontrunner Donald Trump called for barring all Muslims from entering the United States. A campaign press release stated this was, quote, until our representatives can figure out what is going on, end quote. Many Americans have expressed outrage at Trump's proposal, including greater Cincinnati clergy members who say that his rhetoric has reached a new level and that it has crossed a line. Rabbi Gary Zola of Hebrew Union College said that Trump's tone, quote, undermines our basic values as American people and rips the American tapestry. When we start to exclude certain people, we start to set them apart, end quote. The Reverend Sharon Dittmar of the First Unitarian Church said Trump's words also spoke on what she says is an exposure of fear and intolerance that exist in this country. Dittmar said, quote, I think his comment is very anxiety motivated. If you take a minute to think, you are going to engage your critical thinking brain and come up with better ideas. His response was very gut-like, and that's when you can make mistakes. You cross lines, you say things that can't be enforced or aren't fair or discriminant, end quote. Despite his recent comments, Trump continues to lead in the Republican national polls at 35 percent, according to a Fox News poll. The U.S. led a coalition against terrorism in Syria and Iraq on Wednesday, killing ISIS's head finance minister, Abu Salah. Army Colonel Steve Warren informed the Pentagon the coalition strikes had killed not only Salah, but both a senior leader responsible for coordinating the group's extortion activities and another leader who acted as an executive officer. Warren said Salah was, quote, one of the most senior and experienced members of the group's financial network, end quote. The news came as Iraqi security forces reported making advances on two fronts in the city of Ramadi, clearing ISIS militants from a key military command base in a neighborhood on its western edge. Capture of sprawling western Ramadi district of Al Tamim and Anbar Operations Command headquarters could advance government efforts to retake Ramadi, which fell to ISIS in May. The fall of Ramadi, the capital of Anbar province, was the biggest defeat for Iraq's weak central government in nearly a year. This tarnished hopes of exiling the Sunni militants from the countries north and west. This past Sunday night, the Xavier University Athenaeum Club held an open mic night in Gallagher Student Center. I was lucky enough to be there to get the story. This is Cameron Stansberry with Xavier News. We are here tonight at Gallagher Student Center. We have a great open mic night for kids, you know, of all ages to come out. Just kidding. College kids only to come out and have their voices really heard tonight. The Athenaeum has been around for several years. I know that it was around way back in like the 80s and then disappeared for a while and came back in the later 2000s. The Athenaeum is a literary magazine on Xavier's campus and we go out and collect short stories, poetry, uh, black and white photos from Xavier students and we compile them into the book, The Athenaeum, which is then published once a year. My name is Mark. I go to Xavier University. I'm a junior here from Wisconsin. It's something that I never felt comfortable with until really last year as far as reciting my poetry, writing it down, and being comfortable with showing the world. This is your hand. This is your eye. That is a fish. I'd tell anybody who's afraid to uh, express themselves that way because of their own fear of what, what their art actually is that creativity is something that is unfettered and there's no definition of what's good and what's bad. The Athenaeum will not have another open mic night until next semester. We look forward to all the voices that will be heard in the submissions that are due in two weeks. Remember Musketeers, in two weeks submit your best poetry to Athenaeum magazine. We look forward to it. Well for everybody here at Xavier News, my name is Cameron Stansberry. Have a good week, good luck on finals, and let's go X. A group of Norwood residents rallied Tuesday night against violence in their neighborhood after a 20-year-old man was shot in the face in front of Sherman Market. 
The man survived the attack and arrests were made. However, the victim said he knew he was a target but didn't reach out for help because he didn't trust anyone. This sparked residents under the leadership of Pastor Sonny James to march through West Norwood, demanding an end to a larger pattern of local violence. The demonstrators chanted to end fear and violence in their community. Pastor James said, quote, We have residents in our community that don't come outside. We have residents that are afraid for their children's safety. We need to bring cameras to Norwood, surveillance cameras, so that we can catch criminals coming in, catch them where they're at, and catch them on their way out, end quote. The residents concluded the evening at City Hall where Pastor James spoke to City Council calling for collaboration. Council member Sarah Allen says she will try to make it happen. Allen went on to say, quote, it's a slow process, it's hard, it's hard in our society because it takes a long time, end quote. Pastor James presented 13 points to the council on how to end crime in the community, including bringing business and clergy together, creating a youth forum, and mounting surveillance cameras to deter criminals. James said that he plans on organizing another demonstration against violence in the near future. If you're looking for a white Christmas this year, you better start looking for fake snow. This holiday season may look seasonal inside the house with lights, Christmas trees, and traditional tunes, but outside is a different story. With temperatures in the 60s, Channel 5 News interviewed Cincinnati resident Gwen Taylor, who said, quote, I love the warm weather. Here we are December 10th, and I am outside talking to you wearing a t-shirt. It's fantastic, end quote. Warm weather around the holidays is great for people who enjoy golfing and traveling. The streak of warm weather doesn't appear to be ending anytime soon, with a predicted high of 67 degrees this coming Sunday. The last time Cincinnati hit 67 on December 13th was in 1927. Channel 5's Eric Zarnitz says, quote, It may seem inconceivable, but much of this is due to El Nino, the warming of ocean water off the coast of South America. During such an extreme El Nino event, like what we are dealing with this year, the Midwest tends to see warmer than normal temperatures. We will see snow, ice, and cold outbreaks, but expect them to be shorter and less intense this winter." End quote. For the record, this time last year, Cincinnati had over five inches of snow with a yearly average around two inches. That's all for the news desk. Stay with us for Paul Fritchner with the Xavier Sports Report. X go give it to you. Get it on your own. X go deliver. Good afternoon, Xavier Musketeers. I'm Paul Fritchner, and welcome to our last edition of the Xavier Sports Report of the semester. The Bengals have gotten back on track after dropping two games in a row. They demolished the Cleveland Browns in basically every aspect of the game on their way to a 37-3 blowout. Quarterback Andy Dalton threw for 220 yards and two touchdowns as the Bengals gained the top spot in the AFC. Cincinnati will go head-to-head -head with the Pittsburgh Steelers at Paul Brown Stadium this Sunday at 1 p.m. The Bengals have already knocked off the Steelers once this year, and I see them sweeping the season series by a final score of 28 to 20. In the NBA, the Golden State Warriors remain undefeated with an incredible mark of 23 and 0. Led by Steph Curry, the team has a 27 game winning streak dating back to the end of last season. The Xavier women's basketball team suffered a 62 to 53 defeat at the hands of Middle Tennessee on Sunday afternoon, but rebounded for a 63 to 56 win against Radford Wednesday night. 
They will have their Crosstown shootout on Sunday here at the Cintas Center at 5 p.m. The men's basketball team has suffered no post-tournament malaise from Orlando in manhandling an overmatched Western Kentucky team Saturday night for a 95-64 victory. Trayvon Blewett recorded another double-double with 21 points and 10 rebounds, while James Farr had a career-high 18 points. Then on Tuesday night, Xavier flew past with Wright State 90-55, powered by a 25-0 run in the first half. Fark continued his excellence on the glass as he corralled 10 rebounds, continually proving he's one of the best rebounders in the country. And now, this is it, folks. It's the game we've been waiting for since D. Davis broke the hearts of Cincinnati Bearcat fans back in February. The Crosstown Shootout returns to Xavier's campus for the first time since 2011, and it'll be broadcast nationally on Fox at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow night. The game will be available in the most households in shootout history, and it will also be the first time both teams will be ranked in the game since 1994. Xavier enters at number 12 and Cincinnati at number 23. Xavier News sent our own Connor Muldoon around campus to ask you students how you're feeling about the big game. Well, tomorrow marks the first time in four years that the Crosstown Shootout will be back in Cintas Center, and we in the studio wanted to find out what you guys thought about it. What do you know about the UC Xavier rivalry? Well, I know that's a storied rivalry with great names like Oscar Robinson, David West, Two Holloway, and others. And uh, it's always been fierce competition. How excited are you for UC Week? Um, well, I'm pretty stoked, uh, to be honest. Uh, this has been four years in the making. Um, it hasn't been at Xavier in four years. And uh, being a senior, this is what I want to go out on, you know, knowing that Xavier's going to knock off UC. What do you love most about seeing UC lose? Because Xavier is better in every possible way. Do you have any friends who go to UC right now? Um, yeah, I actually room with a girl that goes to UC. How's that working out right now? Uh, we're not exactly uh, speaking on right now. Final score outcome? Ooh, I think we're going to win by 15. So we'll go, what is that, 75, 60? Even though UC might be ranked higher than us at some years, not this year, of course, we will always be the number one team in Cincinnati. You can be sure that tomorrow at Cinta Center, this building right behind me, it will be loud, it will be rocking, and hopefully our X-Men can perform in front of a sold-out Xavier crowd. Reporting for Xavier News, I'm Connor Muldoon. Thanks, Connor. It certainly does look like it could be a historic night in the Cintas tomorrow. As for my thoughts, I think Xavier will feed off the energy of the crowd and route to a 75-65 victory for their third Crosstown shootout victory in a row. The key will be hitting their shots, especially in the low post and from three, as well as winning the battle of the boards. Thanks for watching, Musketeer fans. On behalf of everyone at Xavier News, I'm Paul Fritchner. Study hard for finals, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Be loud tomorrow at the game, and lastly, let's go X.